So I'm going to talk about some work which I did during my postdoc uh, at solid state physics laboratory ETH Zurich. Uh, now I, am, I have moved to uh, Department of Physics, IIT Kharagpur. So the title of my talk is Non-Local Transport in Indium Arsenide Gallium Antimonide Composite Quantum Well, which is a possible candidate for uh, two-dimensional topological insulator. Okay. So the system is like that. Uh, we sandwich two material. One is of one thin layer of indium arsenide and one thin layer of gallium antimonide. Both of are narrow band gap semiconductor. So it has a band gap of, uh, indium arsenide has a band gap of 0.36 electron volt and gallium antimonide has 0.7 electron volt. And these are sandwiched between two barrier materials, which are aluminum antimonide, which has a band gap of 1.6 CV. So, but the interesting fact here is that this blue line, which is the conduction band, and this red line is the valence band. If you see here, uh, the indium arsenide conduction band lies below the valence band of gallium antimonide. So this is called the uh, kind of type three band alignment or broken gap uh, alignment, okay? Now here, one layer of electron uh, and here one layer of hole can coexist together. Now, if you see the uncoupled well, uncoupled quantum well of these two material, then, uh, you can see this conduction band lies below this uh, below this valence band, valence band of gallium antimonide. So this is called the inverted band structure. Now, if you consider the quantum tunneling between these two layers and the charge transfer also, then there is a formation of alloy quantum tunneling between these two layers. Then there is a formation of a uh, hybridized small hybridization gap, uh, hybridization gap of around five to ten milli electron volt. And this you can you can form uh, you you can use two band Hamiltonian, where E, e electron and E hole is the uh, electron and hole energy, and this is the off diagonal turn determines the tunneling. And this tunneling one can take into the forms like a bonding and on anti bonding kind of state. Now this material system was is quite old, and it was studies in 1990s, but in 2008 it uh, got a new angle, and this Liu group has shown that in this hybridization gap, if you consider some this band inversion and this strong spin orbit interaction which is there in indium arsenide and gallium antimonide both, and if you also consider the time reversal symmetry, then there could be, there, there is a gapless edge modes in this hybridization gap. And these two edge modes are coming from two different spins. So from an experimentalist point of view, what you can think of, if you have a, if you have a, this kind of rectangular block, uh, if, if your Fermi level is somewhere in this gap, then you have a, you have a one state, one spin state is going in one direction and another spin state is going in the other direction. So this is, this is called the helical edge states. And that is something like called quantum spin hall effect. And you, as you have heard from the previous talk, there is one, there is the first material where, where it has been observed is mercury telluride. But here, here the interesting thing is that you are engineering this to engineering the band structure. You can tune the, you can change the uh, like uh, thickness of this two material, and uh, then you can tune this band structure. Okay, you can go to normal uh, normal gap to uh, quantum in quantum spin hole state. Okay, now there. Is, oh, sorry. I'm, So, uh, so one more thing is that uh, uh, they have shown that if you apply electric field, you can also tune the band structure. Okay. Now, uh, with this, I can uh, I, I can ask several questions. First, this thing we want to study from the beginning, like whether we can observe electron hole transport and their hybridization. This is the first question we are going to ask. Then the second question is that what is the effect of disorder? Because the Gap size is very small, like you, it's five to 10 milli electron volt. In terms of temperature, it's only 50 to 100 Kelvin. So you have to go to low temperature and the material quality has to be ultra clean to observe this gap and quantum spin hole state. So what is the effect of disorder? Then what is the effect of magnetic field? So we can do a magnetic field transport measurement and you can see what is the effect of magnetic field. On this, if we if you observe this quantum spin hole state, then what is the effect on this of magnetic field? Now, the last thing, like what we want to observe, can you observe this quantum spin hole edge state? So, this is our uh, material system. This we grow uh, like we used to grow by 
molecular beam epitaxy layer by layer. Like you can deposit one layer by one layer, one atomic layer by one atomic layer. This is the cleanest uh, way you can grow. And here is the barrier, here is the indium arsenide, and here is the gallium antimonide. And the total thickness is 15 plus 8, uh, 23 nanometer. So it's effectively two dimensional system. Now in, in more, you can see more in this way, like you have this indium arsenide and gallium antimonide. Now we can put metal contact to measure the, uh, measure the conductance. And we can tune the, tune the conductance by applying a gate from the top. So you can tune the Fermi level. And often we, what we use, we make hall bar kind of device to measure the longitudinal resistivity and the hall resistance at the same time. So we can get, get the density of this material, okay? So wh what is the first thing? First thing what you observe, like if you, in this hall, ki hall bar kind of device, what we measure, we measure the longitudinal resistance and the hall resistance, okay? We pass the current along this direction. Now what we observe here, here it is plotted longitudinal resistance as a function of top gate voltage. So gate voltage is kind of density. So gate voltage means, uh, gate means you, it's like a capacitor. So if you apply positive gate voltage, that means you are inducing electrons. If you apply negative gate voltage, that means you are inducing holes, okay? So here what you can see in the positive side, it's, it's mainly electrons. Here the resistance is low, like it's highly conductive. Then you are reducing the gate voltage, like you are, uh, you are inducing to, you are going towards whole side. Then you can see that there is a peak and then it goes down. So probably you have seen graphene field effect transistor kind of behavior where you, you see their direct point feature where the resistance is not maximum. So here what is happening, here the resistance, you are reducing the electron density and then you reach a point where electron and hole density are equal and it's like a, an effective density equal to zero. So that's why the resistance is maximum. So it's called the, uh, uh, this is called the charge neutrality point. Okay, now you can, you can get the uh, effective density from the hall measurement and the red are the electrons and uh, blue are the holes. Now the interesting thing is that if you take the slope, if you take the slope around, around uh, at this charge neutrality point, you can see that both electron and hole density are present. So electron and hole effectively uh, coexist at this charge neutrality point. Now, now, how, how do we know, uh, one, so this is the point where electron and hole coexist. Now we can, we can get to know uh, uh, this coexistence from low field magneto resistance measurement also. So in your, in your system you have electron and holes both. So if you take the system classically and if you take the low field magneto resistance measurement, then in longitudinal me measurement resistance, you will see parabolic kind of feature, which is, which is called Zare Zaremba model and you can, in the hall, hall measurement, what you see, you don't see linear kind of feature. You see like something like S-like feature and some, uh, and this positive slope means, uh, 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 this, this slope means electrons and this negative slope corresponds to holes. So that, that says that electron and hole coexist in our system. We have done also te temperature dependence measurement and the parallel magnetic field measurement to, to show that uh, the, the, there is indeed hybridization gap but I'm not going to that detail. What I'm going to focus, uh, what happened at high magnetic field. So you have, uh, you have a system with electron and holes. Now you can apply magnetic field. Perp in perpendicular magnetic field, it can form Landau levels. Now there are two kinds of uh, carrier. So it can form electron Landau levels and hole Landau levels. Now in here you can see, this is called the fan, Landau fan diagram, where you plot in one axis, top gate voltage or the density. And in the y axis, it's, it's plotted magnetic field. And in the color scale, what you can see, you, it's longitudinal resistivity. Now longitudinal resistivity, uh, uh, this blue means very low and red means very high. Now you can see, this is electron side, wh what you have observed before. And this le left side is the whole side. Now in electron side, you can see very nice uh, Landau levels, one by one, and this is also even Demand splitted Landau levels. And in the whole side also, you can see this Landau levels, but due to low mobility of holes, you can't, you can't get this Landau levels very clean. This experiment was done although in 80 millikelvin of temperature. Now, <coughs> if you take a cut uh, in this magnetic field axis, 
uh, what you can see this at 11 tesla of magnetic field this blue line corresponds to this longitudinal resistivity where you observe this uh, nice uh, Landau level transition feature uh, both electron side and hole side and in this red line corresponds to this uh, uh, hall conductivity which shows also nice uh, quantum hall step. But the interesting thing happens at the charge neutrality point where the electron and hole both goes to both dense uh, like total density goes to zero. Here you see that this longitudinal resistivity goes very high like it is uh, here it is 346 kilo ohm which is roughly 10, 10, 15 times higher than the resistance quantum. So, any resistance in the quantum hall states higher than uh, h upon e square is surprising thing. So, what we took, we took the cut along this magnetic field direction and, and we take the magnetic field dependence uh, of the resistivity and there, there, uh, there the question is that we see that as a function of magnetic field it, uh, it, in, it increases. Now, we have done that uh, there is a prediction uh, in uh, theoretical prediction if there is a quantum spin hole space here as a function of magnetic field after some time you see there is a transition from quantum spin to uh, uh, like uh, normal insulator transition. So, the question is whether we are seeing this kind of transition or not. So, we have done the temperature dependence transition and we see activated behavior. So, the question is if it is a normal insulator or not. So, uh, we did some additional measurement like non-local transport measurement where we pass a current along this direction and measure the voltage far away from it. So, uh, so in this non-local measurement what we find, uh, sorry one more minute, uh, in this non-local measurement what we find that there is a enhancement, enhanced non-local signal only in the, uh, in the charge neutrality point after certain magnetic field. So, we did that uh, like uh, as a function of distance we find that this non-local resistance uh, uh, go decay exponentially, but the decay length is very high like 200 micron which you cannot explain using diffusive model. So, main conclusion is that uh, at high magnetic field at the charge neutrality point there is a edge channel generated and this edge channel is helical. It is not, it is completely different from the topological insulator which happens at zero magnetic field and this you can explain using the. Uh, uh, using the hybridization between the electron and hole Landau levels which we have uh, shown in this uh, uh, like in this paper and uh, okay I'll, I don't have time to show this uh, nice result, result on zero magnetic field where, where we see the evidence of uh, topological insulator phase at zero magnetic field but just by incorporating the disorder and localizing the bulk. So, with this I just want to uh, show the conclusion where uh, I have shown the magnetotransport measurement and we see the generation of helical edge channels due to quantum hall uh, uh, hybrid, hybridization between the Landau levels and uh, uh, we have also observed the glimpses of helical edge channel transport in disordered uh, material ok in, uh, in this. Uh, yes, we uh, rotate the magnetic field, yes we have done the rotating like parallel magnetic field and also we rotate the magnetic field. So, 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 actually uh, in parallel field what happens uh, the band structure changes there is a uh, semiconductor to semi metallic transition in this material. So, we observe that the peak, peak decreases and it shows the semi metallic kind of feature. So, that data I have I have not shown this. Um, I have a question about the S type behavior that you showed for the Hall coefficient. So, uh, gen so I can naively think of it as it is going like 1 over Ne for both uh, holes and electrons and then you have like a region where it is coexisting. So, you have like an S type yeah. that is the thing right. So, uh, uh, so in that case like uh, the width of it or like how sharp your S is kind of defines how um, whether you have like puddles like structure. I know it from the graphene perspective. So, in this case like you do not have a very sharp uh, feature right. It is not like quite sharp it is quite skewed out. Yeah, quite so, the, the, what does it tell you about the charge neutrality point? So, it is a it is a large millimeter size sample. So, I think it is kind of even if you have a puddles. So, you are saying the charge neutrality point could be like different for the yeah, across the sample. Yeah, yeah it could be different from sample to sample because there is there is a disorder over, all over it is a highly disordered system. So, how are this hybridizing means uh, basically this uh, in the Hamiltonian 
like indium arsenide has a S like conduction band okay and this this uh, this whole whole type of band comes from the uh, gallium antimony p type states now the s equal to zero momentum state and like s uh, you have to you have to find the states of same momentum so j equal to half and j equal to half of this band whole band will couple to that and that will give rise to kx plus, kx plus iky type of dependence of the in the diagonal term of diagonal 